What do you think? What word are you going to put to that? Bucolic? Pastoral? Idyllic? Good field. Mother, soccer mother, and children. Sunday in July at Columbine High School. Uh, what category do we put this in? I don't know what category. I want to put this in. Um, killer kids. Uh, maybe an episode to killer kids. Uh, this is obviously a uh, a match to the uh, the uh, tower at uh, we uh, saw at the uh, Austin campus, uh, the Texas University campus in Austin. Okay. So, uh, I don't know, uh, what kind of category? Here in the parking lot now, um, you know, categories, um, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, uh, a trophy for everyone category. How about that? A, a kind of, uh, everybody's a winner. Okay, that, that kind of a category. No losers, everybody is great. Okay, it's not the sport, it's not, you know, winning or losing, it's just all sport, trophy for everyone, you know, or how about, if not a trophy, how about passing grades for everyone, okay, everybody passes the exit exam, nobody's left behind, Everybody gets a diploma. How about that category? The trophy category. You know, the kids that killed here, um, they, they weren't wanting anything. Um, you know, one walk through this neighborhood around this school, and you could tell these kids that murdered their classmates and their teachers did not come from some broken, uh, awful, uh, violent ridden home with no electricity or running water. And these kids had very, very, very expensive weaponry, very expensive ammunition. They did not want for ammunition or guns or weapons. They had everything they wanted. Now, I don't even know if they worked. I don't, you know, I don't know if either of them had a job. But uh, by the looks of their armor, their parents suited them well. They did not want... You know, I think I mentioned it in Atlanta uh, that uh, I've taught. I've uh, done some teaching in my day. Um, I taught uh, community college, South Central LA, to uh, Mount San Antonio College in uh, Walnut, California, which is very much like this community here. Um, and for a year, <laughs> I taught high school. So, um, I have a little bit of experience, um, with, uh, teaching and young people. And there, there's a saying that all teachers say among themselves, 
and if you know and and you know or they say it to each other and then they say it to themselves and they repeat it time and time and time again because it becomes like a mantra uh, a survival technique in some schools and in dealing with some students you know um and it's really true i found it to be true you know um everything goes back to the parents <laughs> you know i mean it sounds so cliche you know but it you know i don't care if the child is inner city i don't care if the child is littleton colorado it all goes back to the parents you know if parents are not involved if parents are not engaged then you will have Columbine in a in a in a, uh, a bucolic community full of soccer moms, green hills, smiling children. It really does go back to the parents, and it goes back to administrators too. Because just as parents shouldn't give trophies or things as a way of uh, substituting work, either on their part or on the student's part, you know, when I talk trophy, I mean, you know, trophies at a soccer game, or I'm talking uh, uh, diplomas to get out of high school to falsify, you know, exit exams like they did in so many inner cities like Atlanta and Columbus, Ohio, you know. If the, if the intention is to win favor with the student slash child, son or daughter, you're not really doing it, you know. There's no... You know, what has been earned by passing someone on and giving them a, a, a diploma from a high school, which means absolutely nothing. You know, something they could boast about to friends, like the trophy in their room that they got simply by being on the field at a soccer match. You know. Parent involvement in a student child's life is no is is far greater than any thing that parent or teacher can give them. It truly is. The best teachers that students always liked, from whether the high school that I taught at or the community college were those teachers who became involved in the student's life and were interested in that student. Okay. Funny story. Well, a, a, a teachable moment, I might say, from one of my students. Um... The one year I taught high school, and don't let any teacher fool you, okay? Any new teacher is taught by the students. <laughs> They're not taught by, you know, mentoring teachers or this or that. The students will teach the teacher, <laughs> okay? Anyways, it's, that's, another, that's another blog. I was teaching in a uh, private high school. West Hills, and it was my first teaching job at uh, private high school, English, all levels, 9 through 12. And it was in a community much like this here, um, very exclusive and very private, West Hills. It was in West Hills, California, outside of uh, L.A., um, near Tarzana. And uh, I was... All right, um, I, I've just been kicked off the uh, 
Columbine campus, so I lost my train of thought. I don't know. I, was, I thought I, you know, paid the sales tax here, but I guess not. I, maybe I need property taxes or something, but I've just been kicked off a public high school campus. Uh, <laughs> yes. 15 year old security guard is like, oh no, yeah, no, private property. Like, oh wow, well, I didn't want to go inside. He's like, oh no, it's, you can't even stand outside now. I said, boy, that's nice. Anyways, what I was about to say is that I, I there was a student in one of my classes at the high school, and uh, he was trouble. I mean, he came in the middle of the semester and just every day I dreaded seeing him because it was like, it, it just it just was trouble, you know? I tried everything with him and uh, no luck. Um, I, I, I phoned his house, I phoned his family, I phoned his mother, you know, to talk to her about him. And, she never was there and she never returned any of my calls okay which might tell you <laughs> something about why he was such trouble in my class anyways i mean she didn't even return the call you know do me the favor so it's, it's like he's all yours it's a private school you guys should know how to deal with this anyways um he joined the baseball team um, there at uh, the high school and uh, you know Monday morning I would try to make small talk with him about the game the past week just to somehow engage him to get him kind of on my side uh, and he would never say anything about the game except uh, why don't you why don't you come to a game why don't you come and watch me play and I always poo-pooed it. I just didn't, you know, it's like, well, yeah, maybe, but, you know, I got so much homework. And truth was, I, I was living miles and miles and miles away from West Hills. I could, I could teach there, but I couldn't live there kind of thing, you know. Kind of ahead of the arc there as far as public servants are concerned. Anyways, um, that's all we used to say about the game. Uh, come and watch me play. Come and see me play. Well, just so happens that on the team schedule was uh, a game in my neighborhood in Pasadena, California. Okay, they were playing somebody in Pasadena, some high school in Pasadena. So I went to that game. Okay, instead of going back to my apartment there, I went to this high school game. And believe me, I dreaded it. I, I had no interest. But I went. You know? And when he came to bat, I cheered him on. And I stayed, believe it or not, for the full hour, hour and a half, or whatever it took for the game to be played. And then I went home. He never was a problem in my class after that. Not only did his behavior improve, but also his grades. And, I might add here, I never went to another baseball game. I don't know. It's the moral of the tale. It's the moral of the story here.